all designers, whether you are a woman or whatever race you are, they treat you the same. Mm. And as long as you are capable of and fitting into their design, yeah. uh, you are well respected. Looking down on other people is not a good way to uh, proceed to the future. I think everyone should be encouraged to um, follow their passions. Every race are the same, and uh, we are doing what we're supposed to do. I'm really, really happy and overwhelmed with the response from the public. I'm, I'm so honored and proud to create a design for, for this, um, to share my culture. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Gina Wong, um, founder and president of the Asian Gold Ribbon Campaign. And I'm so excited and pleased to be sitting here with Brenda Tong, who's graciously agreed um, to be interviewed. She's um, allowed me to call her Auntie Brenda. I want to show the article that was shared with me, but look at this beautiful TTC Lunar New Year theme wrapped photo that you designed and beautiful photo of you. Like it's, it's really just gorgeous when I look at it, Year of the Tiger. So much pride and yeah, just brings alive all the colors. And here are some of your other projects. This is a stamp that you worked on. Just some wonderful, amazing work. So welcome to Auntie. Thank you for being <laughs> here. Well, thank you to have me. What was it like to grow up and become a designer in your field as an immigrant? I would love to hear about that. So I, uh, I study communications design in the Hong Kong Polytechnic and came to Toronto in 1988. And uh, my husband and my son reunited with me a year later. So um, in the first year all by myself, I have to quickly learn how to adapt to the new environment because I've never been to Canada. And uh, I have to, uh, like every Im immigrant, that I need to look for a place to stay, a job, and uh, how to travel around the city. And most importantly is to learn the Canadian culture. Right, right. And I found a very good company uh, and well-known company in Toronto who did a lot of big projects and also in the US. So yeah, the, my first project in Toronto was Skydome and now it's called the Rogers Center. And then later on, it was the Air Canada Center. Right now, it's called the uh, Scotiabank Arena. So I gained a lot of experience in doing a lot of the big city projects. Well, I was started as a graphic designer. And then after two years in the uh, advertising field, I think that there are too many graphic designers. So I, I kind of divert myself to another view, which is working in that architectural firm. And uh, I'm so grateful that the, the boss in the architect firm uh, liked my work a lot. I only have one portfolio for signage work, which I did at the college. And he likes it a lot. So he hired me and I told him that I'm not good at uh, reading plans and materials. I'm not good at that. And he said, well, I'll teach you. Mm. So I'm so happy and so grateful that he hired me and I learned a lot from there. So um, I changed to the architectural field to do the signage for buildings. Mm. So back in Hong Kong, I also did large projects for uh, Hong Kong lands, like the Connaught Center, uh, the Exchange Square. Um, those are big projects in Hong Kong. So how did that translate then to doing this project for the Lunar New Year and the design on the, on the screen? <laughs> how, do, how does that come from that? So I have the background for uh, graphic design. And uh, even though I'm, I'm doing signage and wayfinding, uh, there's a lot of uh, applications that require the graphic sense. So um, you have to uh, respect the architecture, the interior. So that also applies some graphic uh, sense 
to the design. And when my manager at TTC asked me if I'm interested in doing the um, the graphic wraps for the streetcar for Lunar New Year, and I said, well, of course, because next year is the year of a tiger. It's my son's born oh, year. Yes. So I said, I would love to do that. Amazing. And I already immediately, I have that picture in my mind. You did. Yeah, because I, I want to um, make the... The picture looks um, happy and joy because it's the beginning of the year. Everybody is looking for good luck and uh, happiness and full of hope and prosperity. Yes. And also to wrap the streetcar and buses will draw a lot of attention to the public. And that also give out a message of encouraging people to take the public transit Yes. To save the environment as well. Yes, absolutely. So there's a lot of good meanings behind it. Yes. Well, and the color is so bold and, you know, just at a time really when a lot of racism happening for Chinese and East Asian Mm -hmm. people, did that come to mind for you when you thought about, you know, everyone's going to ride this train? Yeah. No, I, I, it didn't bother me. Yeah. Because, um, and I think they eventually they will understand, yeah. you know, and um, uh, the we're, we're just doing our job and uh, every race are the same and uh, we are doing what we supposed to do. Yes. Looking down on other people is not a good way to uh, proceed to the future. And also um, in my mind, People don't understand the uh, the Asian culture, and what they look at is um, like the black and white painting. So I I introduce the the red and the gold color, which is the lucky color, or happy color to the Asian people. Yes. So which I think will will raise a lot of interest, not only to the Asian to other culture as well, so that they they look at it. Oh, so the people from Asia is not that boring, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. We're right. full of happiness and joy. Yes. So we want to bring this to other uh, co- uh, other races as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that pride and beauty and boldness can't, mm-hmm. can't be taken away. It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. You know, I, I think the timing of it was was, you know, from the perspective of, things that we do at the Asian Gold Ribbon and representation and really trying to raise the spirits of Asians who've been so horribly treated since the beginning, well, for for generations now, but particularly with the pandemic and everything and how Mm -hmm. just that, you know, just the beauty of it, admiring something like that. And it represents our culture. There's just so much pride in that. Did you, did you think growing up, before you immigrated, that you would be doing this kind of work at, to this scale? Um, I didn't know. You know, in a way, I uh, I think this is God's plan for me. Uh, he equipped me from uh, doing from being a graphic designer to become an architectural graphic designer or signage designer. He would equipped me back then. So that I can come here and do and do all these big projects. It's like the the choices that you made led to this path that just has brought you to do all of this incredible work because of the skills that you have, the path that you're talking about and God's path, and mm-hmm. the way that you you really are the person that puts the path to people and making sense of their journey. And yeah, that that's how it's been for you that you've followed along in this life journey. Yeah, I think everything is like, um, for me, even in a strange place in Canada that I never been, and uh, the path is very smooth. To me, the first couple of years I worked in uh, the big company, who is well known to the graphic field, and then. Um, and then I move on to another company, which is um, doing more signage and wayfinding. And uh, 
eventually the last job before TTC, I worked for more than 20 years. Mm. And in that company, I, I did a lot of the, the projects. But the first um, the first company that I worked with, I had because I was the only Chinese in the company, and they are the coordinator for the Canada's post stamps. And that's why I have the opportunity to design the stamps. And I worked together with the, uh, the professor at Sheridan College. And I remember that they came to my house to uh, discuss about the stamp. And I gained a lot of experience on uh, doing graphic design at, in just one project like that. You've left your mark in so many places. Yeah. So that's why the, uh, my husband and my daughters were saying, tell us which one that you didn't work on. <laughs> what inspired you to immigrate to Canada by yourself? And I'm going to guess probably at quite a young age as a woman. What, what inspired you to do that? Um, well, it, it's just happened because I have one of the uh, schoolmates in uh, the Polytechnic, and he called me before he left. He is also uh, coming to Canada, but he's stationed in Vancouver. And uh, he called me and said, I'm leaving, and you have enough points to apply to immigrate to Canada. And I said, do I? So, <laughs> so I talked to my mom, at that point, and she said, well, if you want to go, you just go. Wow. So I apply in uh, early spring, and then I got the approval in summer, and I have to leave in that summer, oh my. which I, I'm totally unprepared. And um, our son is less than a year old. Oh my gosh. So, um, yeah, but we have to go because, you know, it's, a, it's an opportunity. So we went. Wow. And, and it took a year for your husband and son to play. Yeah. Well, in fact, that they landed on the same day with me, but then they went back because my husband has a, a contract to teach in the college for two years. And he just finished one year. So he has to finish his contract before he comes. So and I cannot look after my son by myself right. in a new place. Right. So he has to take him back to Hong Kong. So that's why we're separated for one year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, back then, uh, communication is not as easy as now. And uh, the telephone fees are like a dollar a minute. So we have to assign or we have to come up with the time that we're both available to talk and, and brought up to date of what we're doing and what do we do. So that was a Saturday morning where we talked to each other and my son wasn't even talking back then. So I just waved at him and I talked to him and he smiled and oh that broke my heart too. That's, that would be so hard. Yeah. How soon after was your daughter born? Uh, that was six years after. Six years later. Yeah. Yeah. So I have two daughters, one born six years apart from my son, and the other one is two years from my other daughter. Three kids. Yeah. Three three kids. Women. Yeah, that's not easy. <laughs> that's not easy. Well, that goes mm -hmm. to show the sacrifices, you know, the sacrifices that you make for a better life to come to Canada. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And it's hard, too, because to uh, to start a family in a new, completely new place, weather is so different. And uh, you have to, back then, there's not too many Chinese as now right. in Toronto. Yes. And uh, whenever we want to buy a Chinese grocery, we have to go Chinatown. Mm -hmm. And I remember, because I, I live in a condominium, and I remember I, I brought some grocery home. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the wind uh, <laughs> at the ground level of a condominium usually very strong oh. so even though I carry two loads of grocery I still like with the wind blows to me and it, I kind of blowing me backwards <laughs> <laughs> force myself to walk forward oh my goodness that's yeah, a good it, metaphor <laughs> just keep going were mm -hmm. there some barriers 
did you find as a Chinese immigrant? Um, I didn't find that much, actually. Oh. Um, because in the design field, I think um, all designers, whether you are women or, or you are what, whatever races you are, they treat you the same. Oh. And as long as you are capable of and fitting into their design, yeah. uh, you are well respected. Wow. Wouldn't that be great of all professions? What are you most proud of in your work? Well, like I said, I, I did a lot of um, big projects in Canada, U.S., and also in Asia. And uh, anywhere we go uh, during our family ride, uh, anywhere that uh, we travel in Toronto, I always said, well, I work on this, I work on that. And then eventually um, they, they tease me, like, tell us which one you're not involved. <laughs> Rather than telling us which one you are, you worked on. <laughs> That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. even in the United States, you've mm -hmm. had projects there. Yeah, I worked on MoMA. <gasps> I worked on uh, MIT. Wow. Um, I worked on uh, Whitney uh, Museum of American Art. That one project brought me nine awards. <gasps> oh, I'm so gosh. glad that... Um, yeah, that, that project draws so much attention as well. And uh, the um, Society of Environmental Graphic Design, we, we won the award on that one. So everyone in the design field knows about it. One of the things that I read in the article was that, um, you know, you aren't somebody who talks a lot about the things that you've done and your accomplishments. And I think that's also in keeping with maybe the Chinese culture that we are humble and we don't really yeah. you know, praise ourselves. So again, yeah. I'm so thankful that you're doing this, but what was it yeah. like for you that your daughter, you know, kind of put you out there and now, you know, I found you and I want to interview you and you are talking about the things you've accomplished. What's that like? I'm really, really happy and overwhelmed with the response from the public. I'm, I'm so honored and proud to create a design for, for this, um, to share my culture and my thinking um, as being one of the showcase that is all around the city with the streetcars and the buses, right, during the, the Lunar New Year. And I also feel very rewarding to hear from people that they intended to take the TTC because they want to see the work. And uh, I also hear some people were saying, oh, I wish I have something in like this in our city. And I found it so excited to be part of the first. Yeah. I'm also, of course, grateful for my daughter. She appreciated my, my design and she is also a very talented artist, illustrator, and she's a, a web page designer. What would you say to Asian youth about following their dreams or how to thrive in what they want to achieve? I think everyone should be encouraged to um, follow their passions, apply what they know or their skill to the field. And if you want to go into something, you know, you need to try everything to find it. When, when I first uh, came here and tried and find a job, you know, back in the 80s, meaning that you have to cold call the companies and ask if they need a designer. So right now it's more convenient. You, you do social media, you use um, the job search engines. It's so much easier to find an opportunity. So also find someone who, who will take the chance on you or mentor you. So I'm, I'm really happy at, to be what I am doing. Yeah. 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 It sounds like you have a lot to do with your own success in doing, you know, you have to kind of put yourself out there and making these cold calls mm -hmm. over and over again and talking about yourself in order yeah. to get and meet those mentors. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't just kind of happen. You took a large part in initiating and making your dreams come true. Yeah. Yes. Well, 
I, I think it's incredible. Do you see yourself as a role model? <laughs> I don't know. I Perhaps I can be a role model, but like, like every Asian, we're always like very shy and uh, we don't like to speak out loud to let everybody know that here I, I achieved this and I achieved that, right? So if happened that they, they find me, I'm so willing to help. Well, and I'm thrilled to have found you <laughs> and that you're willing to put that cultural practice a little bit aside so that people can learn about you and be inspired because I think it's, you know, we are a culture that kind of stays more quiet yeah at the same time when we do speak out and show who we are and the beauty of culture and things that you've done i think it's also really important as i understand it you're you're a foot into retirement yes this is um, my second uh, retirement as i said before because i i retired a year ago after seven months tdc approached me um, to take a contract for someone who's on maternity leave. So after one year, and I decided to uh, to leave because I think that is enough for for me to work on one year. Um, because like I said, I, I worked on private sectors for my whole life, mm. never worked with the government before. So this is a year of a different type of suiting into the government environment well i'm sure there are many projects to use your creative mind and we are we're benefiting so much from it and i am so excited to see what comes of january 22nd uh the upcoming lunar new year i want to really thank you um auntie brenda for meeting with me and allowing me i know we've been talking about this for a while and i i didn't let go i didn't give up <laughs> Because <laughs> I knew that yeah. this was a great story and one that we wanted to share with the Asian Gold Ribbon uh, community. And um, so thank you. Thank you well, so thank much. Thank you so much for having me. My absolute pleasure.